I'm going to welcome Howell back into the booth here momentarily for this match. I've got to say, Robert, that this is uh, something of a novelty for me because the Roosterweights, well, we haven't really seen much of them this weekend. Is uh, No, you're right. There were only four men scheduled for the division, one no showed. So that means we've only had one Roosterweight match all weekend. And, of course, uh, yes. Sawada going directly into the final against Cicero. Of, uh, yeah, so... Little bit of a little bit of a, a unknown quantity for me, I'm afraid. I, I, it's kind of hard to say what the story of these. Uh, I, I will be been. honest with you. I, I don't know. Uh, I like watching roosterweights. It's a smaller bracket, as you were mentioning. You don't. You have less of them. Uh, but they're so technical, man. Like the mobility. I, I just watch these guys move, and I, I wish I could move like that. I've always been like, you know, I have your guy, and I go, I want to move like a lightweight. Like, what can I do to try to move like a lightweight? So I go the smallest weight class, rooster weight. I want to move like these guys. And of course, you know, they have like smaller legs, smaller hips, so they have this mobility advantage on everyone. Um, I think as a result, their jiu-jitsu becomes so much more in-depth. That there's so many more layers to their jiu-jitsu than in the heavier divisions. I feel like the heavier divisions are a lot of times less exciting because of that. Like, you know, depending on how heavy the guys are, it turns into a sumo wrestling match sometimes. Whereas these guys, you can always expect to see beautiful transitions. Because they're lighter, they get to, see, to move a lot more. They're carrying less weight, so you get a lot more activity. You know, I just want to make a point as well that uh, this is actually the first time in 10 years that Kyle Terra wasn't here to compete at the Nogi World Championships. And he was the champion here in the Roosterweight division for the last six years straight. Yeah, he's been very dominant in that weight class. Um, yeah, one of the most, no doubt, was one of the most accomplished uh, competitors in the history of the sport. And, and it's, it's kind of like a loss. I feel like it's a loss when someone like him doesn't compete. But at the yeah. same time, you got to give the guy a break, man. Well, yeah, he's 32. And, you know, he's uh, <laughs> there's certainly not a lot in the sport that he hasn't done. But uh, he was telling me yesterday, you know, that as, as his responsibilities increase, as the injuries mount up, you know, he has to uh, look at it objectively. And, um, you know, we talked about this, about the changing of the generations. But I think it's not a bad thing as a whole. I'd love to see him back in here competing. But at the same time... Uh, I would love to see what other rooster weights there are coming through and give these guys a chance I, to shine. I will say one thing about the age. Well, it's, it's less about the age when I think about the thing. It's more the mileage. So yeah. 32, oh, you're not old. Yes, but he's been training for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So the miles are there, like the, 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 the damage to the joint. So a doctor may look at Coyote Teha's body, and if you had to guess his age, you go, he's 50. <laughs> In fact, I'm serious, because you have arthritis all over. The joints are beat I, up. And he has the face of a 17-year-old. <laughs> no, he, no, he looks like 17, exactly. <laughs> But he, yeah, he, he probably has a lot of damage. That's kind of how I feel about it, to be honest. And I think a lot of guys from, from my generation, it's, not, it's less the age, it's more about the damage. We have There's Cicero Paiva on bottom playing this seated guard position. Paiva and Sawada. Paiva up by one advantage with just under seven minutes left. Super hard to pass, man. I feel like these divisions, I will, it's almost impossible to establish side control these little guys. Nogi especially. Very little to hold on to. It becomes very... A lot of strategy. Yeah, penalty to Sawada. Yeah, so hard to, so hard to pass the guard of these uh, smaller, flexible athletes. But uh, I think that's why there was the, such a development in the, in the nogi, especially of of bypassing the guard pass completely and just going straight to the back. So I, I should have said this for a long time. Well, like my strategy when uh, uh, on top nogi is always to go to the back. I'm trying to get you to go to turtle so I can attack your back. I think holding side control is so difficult because it's so slippery, the guys are so, I want you to scramble to try to prevent my pass so I can go to your back, which is the most common path to submission anyway, right? Back, pass to back take to submission. Well, there was so, a leg attack from Sawada has now put Piver on top. Two points, it's actually four points to two at this stage. I think it's the other way around. Yeah, so Piver up by two. They both had a penalty, not an advantage. Earlier I said it was an advantage. That was my bad. But he did get the reversal points there for coming up on top after a failed leg attack. That is the danger of these leg lock attacks. Is often the guy just come up and get those easy points, right? Correct. Still, yeah, it doesn't stop people going for them. No, absolutely. Like, I, I, I think it all depends on where you are and the, how the, the score is, like how much time you got left. And then these things can make sense or not. 
dependent on all the other circumstances. But, you know, towards the end of the match, if you're losing, it makes, it makes sense. And Sawada there, very flexible guard, playing that reverse to Lahiva there, trying to get Paiva to step in so he can get underneath him. Paiva with the lead. Reached halfway, half the battle so far. The action slowing down here somewhat in this Black Belt Rooster 8 final. Plenty more finals to come up after this one, of course. And Ultra heavyweight's always gone, but we've still got eight more divisions to work our way through. And of course, so the, the women's absolute yeah. final, too. Lots of good matches still, still look to look forward to. And right you know, now, one thing, I was looking through the brackets, actually, Robert, sorry to interrupt, but I was looking through the brackets earlier, and uh, from what I can see is that we shouldn't have any closeouts for the rest of today in the Black Belt Finals. There are no, uh, there's no teammate versus teammate scheduled, so we're going to get a match in every division. Awesome, that's exciting. We are watching the finals of the Rooster Weight, men's Rooster Weight Black Belt Division here. Cicero Paiva versus Sawada. Cicero up by four, uh, two points now. Both competitors have a penalty. Paiva playing very safe, staying clear. Winning this fight, not in a rush. Sawada really needs to be more aggressive here. We don't see too many of the Japanese athletes uh, competing in the, the higher level uh, jiu-jitsu tournaments. There are a handful of them active, but uh, they generally do tend to be in the lighter weight classes. Yes, yes. Ishii was, seems to be like the exception. It's like the first time I've seen like a, like a high level Japanese competitor in a heavier division. And About as I, big as you can get. <laughs> yeah, and, and he's, he's probably like a, you know, a giant in Japan. But like Japan has always been very, very strong in the lighter divisions, without a doubt. but not uncommon to see Japanese athletes make it to the podium of, uh, of all of the major tournaments, actually. Um, even I remember earlier this year at the, the Gi Pan Championships, we actually had an all-Japanese final, and uh, that was great with Tomoyuki Hashimoto yeah. uh, taking gold there in that division, and we're going to see him up actually in the next match. Tomoyuki Hashimoto is going to be facing Joao Miao in the light featherweight final. Oh, I'm excited about that one. That's going to be great. I like watching Hashimoto fight, man. He oh, really he's, a, uh, he's, a, he's a great competitor. Always brings something new to the table as well. And Sawada there with the sweep. Dead even on the scoreboard now. Four points apiece, no advantages. One penalty against each. And you can see Paiva really trying to get underneath him there, trying to sweep Sawada back. He's been winning this for most of this fight. The, this, this, like Haiwal just mentioned, this now score is even. I wonder, Haiwal, who do you think this fight should go to? If it ended right now, who would you give the victory to? Wow, I mean, that is a very, very tough one to ask. I mean, at that's, this that's point, why I asked it. I just yeah. wanted, to, I wanted to ask you that question before you asked me the question. Yeah, you got there first. I got to say, at this point, I feel that Piver has been the slightly uh, busier of the two throughout. He's the one pushing the action a little bit more. Um, but you know, dead even. David even on this scoreboard. Oh, this could be it. This could. Yep, sweep Very by Paiva there. Very timed sweep. With a minute 30 left, this could secure Paiva his victory. If you're wondering what that noise is in the arena, there's actually a, uh, a great brown belt final going on over on Mat 6. Ronaldo Jr. of Atos up against Jake Watson. Uh, this is a, yeah, uh, went right down to the wire there with Ronaldo Jr., I, I think, I believe, taking it. And uh, Sawada there trying to return, give that sweep back, trying to come up there. Paiva with the sprawl, but he's using that to get underneath uh, Paiva. If he can come up, he can score two. One minute left. This has been confirmed, something we've been seeing a lot with a lot of the guard players. Like, they're getting their opponents off balance, but they're not coming up. You've got to come up to finish that sweep. You got them off balance, that's huge. You just got to turn it into something else now. 
Now, I'd like to see these guys wrestle a little bit more to try I, and put the guy down, exactly, right? Exactly, that was exactly my point. Like, you can turn a failed sweep into a wrestling fight. And Piva here, he showed great legwork in, in, in catching those little trip sweeps to come oh, up Sawada on Sawada with right? the sweep. Whoa. Returns the favor. Now with 30 seconds left, it's gonna looks like it's going to go decision. Oh, man, this, this match has been back and forth, very close. Really puts a question mark over who's actually going to take this if it does go to a decision. Yeah, I I don't know how well. I, I, I'm leaning towards Paiva, but it could go either way. There are three referees here. They're going to decide in five seconds. It doesn't look like Paiva's going to be able to sweep. Yeah, tough one. Very, tough very one close. Indeed. Let's see what the, the three judges have to say about this. And it goes. Oh, split. It's split decision. And it's actually in the favor of Sawada. Sawada. Two to one, Sawada. Yeah, split decision. I think the referees were having a hard time deciding as well, but the victory is secured by Nobuhiro Sawada by Triforce Jiu-Jitsu. And Japan takes gold today at that 2018 no Nogi Worlds. Tyler, good to have you back. Yeah, Robert, that was a really exciting one. You don't see too many split decisions. That really is about as close as it gets, huh? Yeah. Just want to watch some replays here of the rooster weight final. Sawada with the shot there. Paiva with the, the sprawl. It was a very close match. And the ref scores two there. I'm not sure that was two. I have my doubts there. It looked like he was just sprawling off of Sawada's shot. And Sawada with the, the sweep, they're coming up with that single X. Yeah, I, I love that the agility. That Look at that, how they move. It's so easy to move when they're that, yeah. you know, that light. But it makes jiu-jitsu so beautiful, right? Because I think movement is such an underrated part of jiu-jitsu. People who can move well can make it really make it look artistic and beautiful. And you really see that on display at this rooster weight weight class. And you know, there's probably no better example of that than 10-time uh, world champion Bruno Malvasine. 